SQL developers, SSIS developers, .NET developers, developers that work with stored procedures in SQL Server need to be comfortable with how return codes work. So I just got through recording this awesome little seven minutes on what is a return code and how it works, and I erased it, and I'm starting over here. Um, it's not really my place to teach you what return codes are. It's out of the scope, really, of this course. I love to talk about that stuff, but I can get into a rambling mode where I will just start talking about that and getting so <laughs> worked up about it that it confuses people. So I'm not going to do it. I'm going to tell you the basics of what returns are, and I'm going to show you how to trap the return code. So uh, let's just use the learnitfirst.com database. And what you should know is that stored procedures have a return value or return code. And the default return value is zero. And that indicates success, meaning that the stored procedure ran successfully. It did what the developers expected it to do. You can return anything you want as long as it's negative 100 or lower. So you typically return negative 100 as an indicator of failure. And infrequently, I would return, um, you know, like I might return, I, for example, create proc uh, login user from website. And I'd have some input parameters. And then I'd say, you know, if disabled account, return negative 1,000. And so on the website, in the, the C Sharp or the Visual Basic Code for the ASP.NET web page, I would say, if the return code from this stored procedure is 1,000, show them the message that says their account has been disabled. Um, if, uh, I don't know, uh, locked out, return negative 10,000. I don't know why I, I tend to make them in the negative 100, uh, negative 1,000, negative 10,000, but that's what I do. So I'm going to do this. I'm just going to show you how it works. So let's just build a stored procedure, call it uh, SSIS, <laughs> as um, return zero which is really not necessary. Return is implicit. So this is implicitly done and not necessary uh, syntax sugar, as we often will call it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. The stored procedure accomplishes nothing, but it does return the code 0. And in SQL, we could actually look at it. We could say, let's declare a variable, exec assign the value of the variable to equal the stored procedure SSIS and then let's look at the value of R. I know that looks weird doesn't it? But it returns 0. You declare a variable, you assign the variable to be the execution of the stored procedure and then you just take a look at it because you might need to say if R not equal 0 then do some error handling. So just to show you here, I can alter it and make it return negative 100. And now it just shows that it's negative 100. You see, that's the assignment code here. So I'm going to actually make it do negative 100. And I'm going to show you how to capture this value, just like you did right here in Transact SQL. I'll show you how to do it inside of SSIS. So let's crack open a package. Add a little execute SQL task into it. And we need a variable. So let's make ourselves a integer 32 variable. Um, T SQL return value. Make it an int 32. Come over here hook it up to my SQL Server. I've already built one using the SQL Server native client to that data source here. And we just type it in. You say exec test. And then when you come over here to the parameter mapping, you come up and you say add. You choose the variable that you want to store the value in. We just call it T SQL return, and you change it to 
return value. So I do make it zero and you say okay and then let's grab a script task and let's put it in here and uh, we'll do VB uh, we'll read that particular user variable and let's just do one of those silly little message boxes so variables here and I named it something difficult like a full t sequel return value I think uh, dot value dot to string and you know if I went through that fast we've done it so often in the course it'd probably be helpful to go watch that video on how to do pop-ups uh, with variables say okay and I've actually made a mistake I did this on purpose to show you that I won't get an error, but I will get an incorrect statement. So if we run this in SQL, we get a return code of negative 100 because that's what it says to do. But when I run this in SSIS, I get an error message. What did I do? Could not find the stored procedure. It's in the learn it first. Oh, it's SSIS. My fault. I thought I named it test for some reason. So go back over here and exec SSIS. Run it. And no error message, but look, I get a weird, I get the wrong input, uh, the re wrong return code. This is incredibly dangerous. There's no parameter in my SQL statement. Okay, so look, you assigned, or I assigned, trying to show you how this works and why this is so dangerous. I, there is no parameter in this SQL query. You don't see a question mark, and I'm using OLADB, so that's the only way to do parameters here. So when I came over here and did my parameter mapping, it's basically got a default value, and it didn't assign T-SQL return value. It simply returned the default value that you would set t sequel return value up with. So this is wrong. And what's wrong about it is that I have no question mark. So you remember your t sequel. Your t sequel says you assign the question mark equal. And that's what you have to do. So I need to say execute question mark equal dbo.ssis because now that says okay Mr. Wiggum you will bring you into the parameter mapping now I don't have to change my parameter because it was already mapped to zero and that's what you have to do so be very very careful to ensure that your stored procedure output parameters are returning the right output parameter because if you don't set it up correctly you'll just be returning the default value of your integer.